Welcome to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show. Whether you hold a corporate nine to five or have determined that you want to explore the small business realm, this show is for you. Christian Carrillo talks to entrepreneurs and experts in the real estate and small business realms to discover what they do, why they do it, and how they do it to help show you the art of the possible. And now your host, Christian Carrillo. Welcome back to the Real Estate and Small Business Show. I am your host, Christian Carrillo. Today, we've got a super fun episode for you folks. Our guest is the Chief Doughboy, Andrew Dana. Thank you for being on the show, Andrew. We're super, super happy to have you on. Pleasure's all mine. Chief Doughboy checking in. What's up? Yeah, absolutely. So, Andrew is DC's king of carbs, aka Chief Doughboy, and is the founder and co-owner of multiple award-winning restaurants. Think Timber Pizza Co., Turo's Pizza, and Call Your Mother Deli in DC. Uh, he's got quite the interesting story, and instead of uh, sort of introducing him here, I definitely want to kick it over to him because his story is just amazing, and you know, he's, he's inspired by the, by the unique neighborhoods that make up DC and his restaurants are a reflection of the communities he's grown to love. So I, I think it's only best that, that we hear about him from his, his own mouth. So Andrew, again, thank you so much for hopping on the show. It truly is a pleasure to have you on. Why don't you get us started with a little bit more about who you are? I'd, I'd love to dive into your superpowers. Andrew Wilson, Dana, the first born June 7th, 1986. It was a rainy day. No, it's like, um, but I'm from Washington, D.C., born and raised in the neighborhood of Mount Pleasant. Um, you know, pretty typical upbringing. Went to D.C. public school through eighth grade. Uh, parents switched me to private school for high school. And I was like one of these kids who like never had a real passion, didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. Like I played sports and I loved grubbing, but that was about it. Um, so like all my friends are like, oh, I want to go be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. And I never really had that. Um, so growing up, my dad, who's a lawyer, used to always say like, oh, I wish I had opened a deli. So I sort of had that baked into my mind and I stole his line. And basically I could be in college and grad school. And I would say, oh, I'm going to go into marketing, but really I want to open a pizza restaurant. I just stole his line. And for whatever reason, it was pizza. Um, so I like went to college at Charleston for undergrad, studied political science solely because junior year, my advisor said, you got to declare a major. And I said, all right, what do I have the most credits in? And it was poli sci. Um, And then I had some heinous jobs post-college. I sold windows door to door. I bartended in London. I was just looking for a passion, you know, bouncing around Um, and really didn't know what I wanted to do. So I applied to to grad school at Fordham uh, to go to the MBA program up there, focus in marketing. And I honestly went up there to sort of like figure out what I wanted to do. And I had a graduate internship in sports marketing, hated that. It was just eating pizza and bagels galore in Brooklyn, just like bagel six days a week, pizza three, four days a week, not the most healthy lifestyle, but it was a, it was a huge vibration, huge vibe, had a good time. Um, And so my final project in business school, like my capstone, you know, these kids are writing, you know, their capstones on these like you know, financial institutions and marketing companies. And mine was on a pizzeria. And my teacher was like, what the hell, man? Like, you definitely didn't need to come here to do this. And I was like, well, here I am. Um, but I was still too scared to really jump into the deep end. I had no real restaurant experience, no cooking experience. So I moved back to DC, started working for a financial literacy company, you know, traveling around the country, basically doing sponsorship sales. Um, and just like every day, I started to hate my job more and more. So the idea of opening this pizzeria got bigger and bigger in the back of my head. And then I was actually in Ohio on a work trip and got in a car accident. And I was fine, but I totaled the car and I was like, dog, if I had fucking, excuse me, if I had died in Ohio on this stupid work trip, that would have been a disaster. I was like, I got to chase my dreams. Mm-hmm. And so basically, I was like, all right, like, how can I start this pizza business? And the first step was we started as basically a a food truck, mobile wood fired uh, trailer, hitting farmers markets, festivals, catering, you know, just grinding in the streets, opened the first pizzeria in 2016. That went better than we could have ever expected. Bada bing, bada boom, call your mother. Here we are doing this podcast. I love that. And and you hit on a couple of topics that always intrigue me and that I love hearing folks talk about. And the first is you touched on this idea of having a passion, right? 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 25 now. And I always hear folks, even growing up, right. You hit the nail on the head. I got to have a passion. I got to know exactly what I need to do, right. I'm going to undergraduate. I'm getting my undergrad. I'm going to get my MBA. I need to know exactly what I'm going to do. Could you talk a little bit about what that was like for you? You mentioned you had a couple of different roles and, and throughout the process, you didn't really know what you wanted to do in life, but you kind of had an idea in, in the back of your head, right? What was that sort of like for you? Yeah, you know, it's it's almost like the more schooling you you do, sort of almost the less options you think you have, right? Like I went to a really good private high school. I went to a good college, good grad school. And just like the more schooling it is, it's just like the narrower the paths get. And the reality is, is there's just like so many options. If you love shrimp, you could be a shrimper or study shrimp. Like there's like anything you find that you like, you could chase down a career in. And they don't like, they sort of say you can be whatever you want to be, but like really here, like the four or five career paths. Right. And like nothing ever clicked with me. So I just sort of felt like. I was just like, damn, this sucks, right? It's basically the overall arching feeling I always had. I was like, I guess I got to find a way to make money so I can enjoy my life outside of work. And that's how I was like selling heinous windows and going to get my MBA. Um, and, you know, basically when I started Timber as a mobile food truck, there was no like huge like vision for this turning into what it is now. It was like less about the money and more about just like, oh my God, I want to enjoy my day-to-day -day life. And I think what I proved there is like, whatever you're doing, whether it's this pizza food truck or whatever like if you work hard enough you can find a way to make money doing that and so I think we need to do a better job like teaching students that really truly there are a billion things you could do and like step outside of like the marketing bubble and the lawyer bubble and the doctor bubble like this like it's a big big world and like don't get don't get stuck in these little boxes yeah absolutely and I, I love that because I think you know, you're, you're taught, go to school, get a job, get this career, buy your house, right? It's, it's a sort of path that's just programmed into society. How, how did you, you break away from that, right? You mentioned that maybe you were a little scared to jump into the deep end. You had no restaurant experience. You know, you had this very scary accident and you could have just stayed in a, a very comfortable corporate nine to five job, yet you decided not to do that. What was that like for you? What was that process like? Yeah, man. I mean, I think like my only real skill is I don't stop it good enough. Like I'm like always looking to get better and whether that like no matter what, right? Like if I played basketball, I'm always trying to make my jump shot a little better. And like for this, it was like my life. Like I was like, damn, my life just isn't that tight. Like I don't like working at this desk job. I don't like traveling for work. Um, and you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. I've never been like that risk adverse, right? Like I think a lot of people are so scared to make that leap. And, you know, I was making six figures at this job. And the first year I did timber as a food truck, I made $12,000. And I was like, literally like squatting in my friend's apartments and like my friend's parents' basement. Like I was like, by any means necessary. Um, so I guess the moral of the story, I mean, like my journey was like, I hated my job so much that I was like, this literally can't be it. Um, but I like, I wish there was a way like, like years earlier, there are somebody had told me like listen man like there literally is a million options like what do you actually love we can find you a career in that um but like the way I got there was I guess a roundabout way of hating my job and going into student debt so there's probably a better way yeah I love that and I've seen you post a little bit about the importance of of family friendships partnerships mentors how how important have these sort of folks been in, in your professional development? Have they played a big role in, in sort of the endeavors that you've decided to pursue? Yeah, and it's like not all, not, not everybody was along with me for the whole ride, right? Like I had friends early on that like, were like, what do you mean you can't come to my birthday party on Saturday? And I'm like, listen, man, it's like, it's my new business. I got to be there making it, making it, making it work and making sure it's perfect. And like the people who got that and were sort of like, a supporting me and then the people who were in the trenches with me like I'm blessed that my business partner is now my wife so we like are toe to toe in the trenches every single day um, and then finding people who are just like a little further out, ahead of you in the journey and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in that specific industry right like my number one mentor now is a guy Jeff Zients who has nothing to do with the food industry but he's just like amazing at seeing from point A to B and so I think it's really important to find people who are going to support your sort of dream of like grinding and getting stuff done. And like, you got to cut the fat of the people who don't get it, right? Like there's the people who are still, it's more important to them to go out on Saturday night 
and get wasted than it is sort of like building whatever their dream is. And so you have to cut those people, find the people that are, are about that dream and then find their like one or two great mentors who can give you a little advice. You don't have to have like a huge bench of 10 to 15 people because then you're getting so much information it becomes confusing, right? So it's like, take a couple little things, package it up, make it yours, off to the races. I love that taking a couple of things, packaging what works. There's like the Sir Isaac Newton quote that's like, if I can see far, it is because I've stood on the shoulders of giants, right? So I think that that's, that's very powerful. And those are definitely actionable steps, right? So really, really appreciate you, you sort of uh, diving into that. But, you know, one other topic that you mentioned that, you know, even just thinking about it now kind of blows my mind is how everything sort of maybe started with this capstone project writing your teachers, you know, asking you, what are you doing? What, what was that sort of like for you? You know, how did you take it from step A to, to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I think it was interesting because the capstone was basically based off like what I was enjoying doing at that time. Right? Like I was going to all these great pizzerias in Brooklyn and like I was just trying to find something that was authentic to myself, right? Which I think has sort of been a constant theme throughout all the restaurants is like, we just try and keep it like authentic to ourselves, which I think shines through. And so like for me to do a caps on like some BS marketing firm, I wouldn't have cared about, wouldn't have felt authentic. So I was like, what's something authentic to me? And like, that was the first time in the two years of MBA where I was like, wow, this is something that like actually excites me. And like talking about building and designing the interior and a menu, like I got super stoked about it. And like, you know, most of the people in an MBA program are jabronis anyway. So I brushed off whatever that professor was talking about. I was like, all right, man, you, you do you. Um, but like at that point, I still didn't think it was like a reality. Um, but like two years later, after working for that company and sort of being in the right place, I definitely went back and looked at it. And it like at that point, it was more inspiration than it was like a guidebook, right? Like I'm in a different market and I've learned more and all this stuff. But it was sort of this like, yo, man, you, you wrote this this business plan capstone project two years ago in school like you obviously still have this thing swirling around in your brain like go get it so if anything it was just like a like a motivational thing once I actually wanted to go for it I love that and and you're definitely very authentic to, to who you are and and I was literally looking at the call your mother like menu today and I was like this is so well designed like it's so creative right but uh you know, it, 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 this sort of leads me to my next topic, right? You, you've sort of branched out into different types of structures and different types of businesses. What was that process like for you, right? That, that maybe you started with pizzas and you go on to bagels and delis. What was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's like super scary, right? And like every industry, I feel like there's like an industry norm, right? And it's like, that's in a macro and a micro level. It's like, if you're, I'll just talk about restaurants. Like if you're opening a restaurant, this is the way you have to structure the pay and this is the way you have to structure the menu and this is like if you're doing a jewish deli the design has to be new york city subway tiles like there's all this pressure to do things like the way and i think like what we've learned is we've just sort of shunned that from the beginning we're like we're going to do our own thing we're going to create our own sort of way of sharing tips in the kitchen and stuff that's sort of atypical for the restaurant and like no we're going to shun the typical design of a jewish deli. we're going to do our own thing and like at the beginning, we got a lot of like, what the hell are you doing? Like, and I remember the like, I brought some friends in to look at the first call your mother design and the inside. And they're like, you're not done with this, right? Like, this is crazy. And I was like, no, this is it. And they're like, okay. And like, we opened and it worked and people loved it because it was different, right? And I'm not sure where we got that sort of inspiration or like just absolute desire to do our own thing and not get like put in this box, but it's like worked for us. And that's what I tell people is like, whatever industry you're going in, if you do enough like research and write enough of a business plan, you're like, oh, I have to do it this way. This is the way the hundred people before me have done it. Yeah. But if you do it that way, you're not doing anything unique or different or bringing anything new to the game. And so just sort of find your path in a, in a unique new way to do it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it, it's definitely working out for you all, right? Like I, I was reading on DC Erie and I've been meaning to ask you about this. President Biden he visited Call Your Mother the moment he became president. What, what, what did you think when you, when you heard that or when you read it? Did you have to double check online to make sure it was true? What was that like? I knew what happened. So I was at, it was at our Georgetown shop. We closed at two o'clock on Sundays. I was there at like 1245 and I was like, all right, I'm going to go home. Things are smooth. What in the world could happen in the last hour and 15 minutes? 
and I made it home and my phone exploded. And like, I, I don't have that many friends, so my phone doesn't explode. And I was like, what the F is going on? And there's like pictures of the secret service from people who are there. And I was like, whoa. And like, we've been on like a lot of very cool, like best new restaurants in the country list and stuff like that. And those are always fun. And so I sort of thought it was going to be something like that, but it was way more than that. And like my, my wife and business partners from Argentina, she was on every news channel in Argentina for two weeks. And we had national outlets like reaching out to us. And I think it was just like, you know, not to get political, but Trump didn't go out to a single restaurant in four years when he was here. And like part of the fun thing about living in DC is like interacting uh, with the politicians and seeing where they go and seeing how they sort of support the the different like uh, small businesses. Um, so it was just like sort of like, you know, the the changing of the guard, dawn of a new day or whatever. And it was just like super exciting. Sales went up. Bada bim, bada boom. Yeah, I love that. And I completely agree, right? Living in the DC area, that's sort of part of the experience of being here. So could could not agree more. So so Andrew, next topic here for you. I've, I've, I saw you post quite a bit about this. So I wanted to take the time to, to acknowledge it and, and sort of talk to you about it as well. It's the Beltway Brawl, right? Could you talk a little bit more about what that is and, and sort of what it means and its importance and maybe what the uh, end result was as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a charity called Haymakers for Hope. Um, it's, it's for cancer research um, and they throw four different events, one in New York, Denver, Boston, DC. The DC one's called the Bellway Brawl and it is a charity boxing match. Everybody who boxes has to raise at least, I think it's $7,500. Um, the event brings in over a million dollars a year for cancer research. Um, my grandmother passed away for cancer research, so something near and dear to my heart. Um, we also try and promote sort of healthy lifestyle. So it was like a good way for me to get in shape and sort of take people along on that journey. And then uh, one of the guys who works for us at Call Your Mother is a boxing trainer. And so he actually was my boxing trainer. So it was sort of checked a lot of boxes. It was a fun thing to do, raise money for a great charity. Um, I was nervous as hell. I was more anxious for that than I've been for anything in my life. Um, but it's sort of a microcosm of how we do our businesses. It's like, if we're not sure we over-prepare, I trained harder than I've ever trained and I knocked that mofo out in the first round. So, bam. <laughs> I love that. And it, it, it sort of goes back to what you mentioned, right? You don't stop at good enough, right? Every aspect of your life, you're always trying to push to that, that next level. I was sprinting stairs in a hundred degree heat in August with headgear and a mouth guard in. So I would have the, the cardio for this boxing match. Like most people don't do that for a charity boxing match. Yeah. And, and that's, that's great. And I'm happy you brought that up. Right. I think this is a very relevant to, to the topic or the idea of mentality, right. And the role that it can play in your life. Maybe if you could talk a little bit about how important mentality is to your, or what your daily routine is, I think that that would help our listeners understand, you know, what's, what's helped you become successful? Yeah. I mean, it sort of goes back to that, like never stop it good enough. Right. And I think like, certainly in this like social media era, everybody has this desire to like fast forward to like the C-suite and say, I'm a CEO, I own the business. And it's like, in order for that to really be true and for it to actually work, you have to like run through mother effing walls every day for years or decades. Right. And it's just like, it's really about getting rid of like ego and like stop trying to project something for the world. And like all we've ever tried to do is outwork people and just like never stop it good enough. And I think that works for every industry, right? Like I didn't even know how to make pizza. And what I did was I just made pizza every single day until I figured it out. And like, I didn't stop at like, wow, this is pretty good. I stopped it when I was like, damn, this shit is chronic. This is better than any pizza I've had anywhere <laughs> else. Um, and that's just indicative of how we like operate every single day. We don't like you know, get up and say, oh, we have seven stores now. Everything's good. Now we can chill. We're like, oh shit. Now like the stakes are even higher. And now we have more staff that we're responsible for. So like, how do we get better to ensure that they can continue to make a lot of money and grow in this business? So it's just like every day looking for new challenges and never stopping it good enough. And like just getting rid of all that ego and that bullshit that exists in the world these days. Yeah. I love that, Andrew. And, and it reminds me of, of something Picasso says, right? Good artists copy, great artists steal. And you sort of alluded to this earlier where it's, 
hey, what's working for other folks? What worked for my mentors? What do I like about what they're doing? What don't I like? And then picking out what's going to work for you, right? And you yeah. definitely have that. I love that you have that day one mentality, right? That's, uh, I think it's very powerful. Always. So, so you know, again, Andrew, it's, you know, it's really been a pleasure getting to know more about you. And I'm sure that our listeners have picked up on some true golden nuggets. And I definitely love the, love the stories today. I think they, they've been great. But are you ready for a quick response round? Hit me with it, man. <laughs> so first one here for you. If you lost it all today, what would you do? I'll start again, man. I, got, I, I, I love my life. Um, I really do. I haven't had the Sunday scaries, as they call them, where you don't want to go to work the next day since I've started this business. I love the creative outlet. I love the people I get to work with. So I would bootstrap it again. And if I had to start at the farmer's market in the mobile business again, I would, and I would grow this thing up again, but there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. I love that. They can't take your knowledge away, right? Or your relationships. That's it. Powerful, powerful. Going forward, what do you have planned in your businesses and why? Yeah, we want to, we want to keep growing. Um, specifically, we want to grow the Call Your Mother brand. Um, that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, it started with Timber Pizza Company. That was like the first challenge. I think we're always looking for new challenges. Then we were like, wow, did we just get really lucky or can we create another brand? Like we wanted to basically test ourselves and see, did we catch lightning in a bottle or can we do it a second time? And we, you know, thank you, Bagel Gods. We did it again. Um, and then we were like, let's grow a business. Let's look at that challenge. And so one is for the challenge and two, it's for the staff, right? Like I told our staff when we first opened, don't look at this as a restaurant, look at this as a startup. And like, I want you to truly be able to build a career here. And in order for like us to come through on that promise, we have to grow to create new positions and new opportunities. And like, even in the last two years, we now have a director of marketing and a head of HR and like, you know, an accounting team, and like all these different departments start to pop up the bigger you get. And like people who started as coffee managers become general managers, become area managers, become directors of operations. So like a lot of it is the staff that sort of inspires us to keep growing. I love that. If you could give our listeners one piece of advice today, what would it be? Just hard work's undefeated, man. Like truly, like the amount of people who I think, like who I see who like, I have this great idea and they just think they're going to like, like it's going to be easy and slide in. Like it's it's, just, it's hard work is undefeated. Look at professional sports, look at any industry. It's like the people who are putting in the extra time and effort, like always win, man. So hard work's undefeated. I love it. And I think those, those two big things that I've taken from the interview, hard work is undefeated and I do not stop at good enough. That's so it. powerful. So powerful. Well, especially when you don't have any skills. It's all you got, man. What are my, what are my <laughs> skills? It's like, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Andrew, how can our listeners get to know more about you and connect with you? I mean, shoot me an email, Andrew at callyourmotherdeli.com. We can rap about whatever you want to rap about. Um, I'm not like a huge social media guy. I'm actually trying to get rid of the smartphone, trying to downgrade to a flip phone, just live in the moment. So hit me with an email and we can connect any way you want. I love it again. Andrew, thank you so much for hopping on the show today. It truly has been a pleasure. The golden nuggets, undefeated, undefeated. Thank you so much, my friend. I hope we connect soon. Anytime, man. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show brought to you by Quetzal Capital Group. Quetzal Capital Group works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also looking to add value in the communities where they operate. Quetzal Capital Group, client-centered, data-driven, result-oriented. Connect with us online at QuetzalCapitalGroup.com to learn more.